I was legitimately scared because like I don't have any internet and I can't communicate from the outside world and I was just have you ever been in a situation where you're just in the, in the jungle looking above and praying when is that plane coming <laughs> no i have not <laughs> I was like, oh. and that was like oh that was that was scary yeah yeah recently usa today released an analysis saying that america's coronavirus might be at its most dangerous point and if you're feeling like most people of the world this level of instability likely leads to feelings of fear anxiety and stress and out of all of my friends who know what this feels like what this lifestyle is like jasper stands out among all of them so um, I guess I would classify as a digital nomad, uh, meaning like I don't really have a place that I stay. Be traveling, keep, uh, I mean, I'm jumping from country to country, and now I'm here. You know. When we say digital nomad, that's just a, a really fancy and 2020 way of saying you're homeless. homeless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, technically. Jasper is someone that constantly travels the globe to create content that can be shared online. He films mission documentaries and does photography work. In fact, you might have actually seen some of his work on the Hope Channel on a show called The Lineage Journey. In fact, a few of his photos have even been featured by National Geographic. But as for Jasper himself, to do the work that we enjoy, he actually has to live out of a suitcase without any permanent place to call home. So in today's episode, we're going to start with a most unusual story, a time where Jasper thought that he might die. Why? Well, because Jasper decided to go to North Korea. And how do you even get into North Korea? Isn't it like closed off to foreigners? You can pay someone to bring you to North oh, Korea. So if you bribe yeah, the right yeah. person, yeah. you get in. Yeah, so they they bring you in and then they like hand you over to a tour guide in North Korea. And okay. You, you pay them, yeah. What was the tour like? Oh, it's crazy. I don't know. I mean, we could like spend hours describing North Korea, but think about North Korea as like 1995 or 1990. So it's like a like you going back in time. The hairstyle, the the clothing. Does everyone have everything. like a bowl cut? Because I remember in the 90s, I had a bowl cut. I. Uh, me, I, I'm, I'm, let's go back and see the pictures, but I'm not sure. But, but yeah, the hairstyle so different. The, the woman, especially mm -hmm. for me, I, the man, I'm not really, I can't, I don't really remember. But the women, oh, because you were just looking at the women in, in oh. North Korea, <laughs> <laughs> exposed. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, um, the women that, that stands out for me, the hairstyles, the way they dress, the cars. So it's a little bit, a little bit of uh, from from the 90s, the 80s kind of look. So growing up, I really want to see what North Korea is like, mm -hmm. but I will not recommend it for people to to do. I don't, I don't think I will that, probably I don't not think do that it. anyone recommends going to North Korea. Yeah. I think anyone who recommends yeah. going to North Korea needs to see a doctor. Yeah, I, I, yeah probably I need help or something. <laughs> so, so what was the scariest part about your experience in North Korea? The scariest part is filming illegally. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. they don't want you to film yeah. or take photos. Yeah, they're like, but apparently you said you had photos. So yeah. how did how did you do that? Um, I want to make a little disclaimer. My, some of my friends were allowed to, but I don't know why I was not allowed to. Maybe because of the heightened security or mm. what's ha what, what happened during that time with the Americans and all that kind of stuff. But when I was when 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 I when I went there, they were like, "Hey, you're not allowed to film." But I was able to to gather some materials from North Korea because I was hiding it like this but before, you hit a camera in north this is exactly what they tell tourists not to like this is what happens when you see them yeah, on the news so this is yeah we're not so you're not supposed to do this and you were doing this yeah well they allowed me a camera but the lady said i can only take photos if like if she she says oh take photos here oh so yeah. it's like very controlled yeah this is but, what we want you to see yeah but okay. i was taking photos of things that i'm not supposed to take photos of did they did they find out yeah they when before i left they checked out my cameras i was so scared because the, the 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 security was like hey she was he was he was looking at all the photos and he keeps he, he started to delete stuff oh wow yeah okay so i thought i'll be reprimanded put to jail but yeah, they let me go they just deleted all the stuff but i i mean when i when i went to china i saw all my files already gone Wow. Yeah. So were you able to get stuff? Yeah, I have. I, I bought a, 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 like, it's called Disc Drill. Shout out. If you want to sponsor <laughs> Shout this out program. To <laughs> Disc Drill. So, um, so what, what does that do for you? Um, it recovers the little items. As if taking illegal photos in North Korea wasn't enough, Jasper's conscience would be tried in an eerily familiar way when they asked his group to bow down to an image of the Supreme Leader. I'm not sure if it's a Korean thing because, you know, you've seen Koreans, they bow down. Yeah. yeah but so, that's true of a lot of places yeah, in Yeah, like Asia. Japanese and all that kind of stuff yeah. but I, I'm very conscientious about these stuff yeah mm -hmm. so they asked me to bow down to the statue of North Korea, of the North Korean supreme leader oh and two of them actually Kim Jong-un 
Eun and King Jong Il, if I'm not mistaken. Uh-huh. And they lined us up, and we were lining up, and the lady said, "On the count of three, all bow down to the image." And everyone bowed down except me. And you see this brown Filipino <laughs> boy popping up. <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't you bow down? I don't know. I've just, I just don't. I like, I'm a firm believer of the Ten Commandments, <laughs> and and. And I say hey, I don't want to bow down to any image. And I just felt like during that time, consensuously, though it's I don't think they're asking me to worship. You know, the Bible yeah. talks about worship, but I just during that time, consensuously, I was like, you're just like no. this is my moment yeah. of faith and truth. Yeah. I'm gonna not like miss the boat. But the funny thing is that the news probably would say the guy was killed because he disrespected. Him. Oh yeah, yeah, because it was not. There's no call for worship during that time. Huh. So, so even in the middle of that, all that, you're having this con- conflict Con- in yeah. your heart and My you're afraid. Heart. Yeah, yeah. In addition to North Korea, Jasper's got a million other stories to share. From living in a van while traveling throughout the Arctic Circle, serving in leper colonies in China, and working with the indigenous people in the Maasai Mara, Jasper's work has taken him all across the world and oftentimes into trouble. So we went to a a very deep jungle in Papua, and I was left out because the pastors moved forward in the on some of the visitation in the churches, and I need to go back to the city. And the pastor said, "Don't worry, they'll pick you up in a few hours." <laughs> and then I said, "Okay." And so I start giving up all my rations, my food, bro, like to the to people, the kids. So I was like, "Oh, here's the fig bar and all these things," and and I start giving up my clothes, you know, because it's I'm saying goodbye. Right. right. And and I mean, for those who've never been on like a mission, mission trip, trip type yeah. sort, mm-hmm. sort of thing, mm-hmm. this is kind of standard practice, yeah. right? Like. You, like, whatever you come yeah. be willing you to give it away it, yeah. yeah because people, people people need it mm-hmm. and i was like okay and then i waited the whole until nighttime and the plane never came <laughs> for three days <laughs> why the plane never, i don't know i mean i was talking to the pilot there was a miscommunication was, the pilot said he might have forgotten me or bad weather i'm trying to figure it out and yeah i was I cannot like oh my I'm th- I was like oh this is it I don't speak the language I nothing right I don't have any food left so you're three days in the three jungle days, by yeah. yourself no shower no, food, no shower <laughs> no soap no I gave paper. everything yeah no toilet paper I mean there's a river filled with crocodiles but you know I can't really go there so what do you, what do you do how do you survive oh I I you, what the the blessing is that you won't believe this bro okay so. I'm not sure if they're they're official, but I met a Filipino there. Oh, <laughs> the Filipino one Filipino again. in and the And she's jungle. probably an illegal logger who married an Indonesian who who went there in the jungle, maybe cut trees or something. And okay. he he helped me out. Wow. You know, I was able to eat. I'm, I'm a vegetarian, but I was able to eat fish because there's nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that was that was an interesting moment in my life. I was legitimately scared because like I don't have any internet. Not, I can't communicate from the outside world, and I was just. Have you ever been in a situation where you're just in the in the jungle, looking above and praying, when is that plane coming? <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> I was like, oh, and that was like, oh, that was that was scary. Yeah, yeah, that, that was scary. You know, I grew up in a very third world country, so it's different. You know, the way we flush the toilet is different. <laughs> the way we wash the dishes is different. <laughs> How do you how do you flush the toilet in the Philippines? Oh, I mean, you want to know? <laughs> yeah, tell me. <laughs> you get a book. So in the in 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 America, you press a button, right? Mm-hmm. In the Philippines, most of the time, if you're in like a not so rich community, you get a bucket and then you pour it in as much water as you can, so it will flush. Or else, you know, it gets it gets stuck. So <laughs> <laughs> tell tell people who have never heard about it before. Uh-huh. Tell them about the tabo. Oh, the tabo. Yeah, it's interesting because in America, everyone was like freaking out. Oh, we don't have, we don't have no toilet shower, paper. No shower, no toilet sh- paper. Yeah, and all that. And they were freaking out. Like in the Philippines, we have a, uh, how do you describe Can you help me describe it? A tabo is like a, like a scoop. Like a scoop. Like a, like a small, it. like a small bucket, like <laughs> yeah, a ladle almost. We should put a picture in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then <laughs> you technically scoop water and then you wash your buttocks with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's also what people use to shower. They probably use a separate tabo. Yeah. But uh, if yeah. you don't have running water yeah. for a shower, yeah. what do you do? Uh, no. Uh, so you, you get. So usually you have a pump. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know what th- this is in English, but you have a pump and then you get water from it and then you shower from it. Yeah. Technically, that's how it looks like. And um, then you just pff, over yeah. your head, right? Yeah. Third world stuff, man. Yeah. So not so bad. So when you when it comes to like the coronavirus and things like that. Uh, as far as like, oh, do I have toilet paper? Oh, yeah, do no, I have? Yeah. What, do, like, what are you like? What do I need? 
Uh, oh, during this time? Yeah. Yeah, like rice. <laughs> You got rice and you're happy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, as long as we have rice, we'll be fine. Um, I think it's a different need. You know, when I went in the U.S., I was like, everyone is like, oh, this and that, uh, tissue paper. But but in the Philippines, it's just food. Yeah. yeah. Or sanitizer, I guess. What makes someone decide to give up on the everyday comforts of a stable job and a roof over their head? What causes someone to choose this kind of lifestyle? Well, for Jasper, it was nothing short of a miracle. So when I was 17 years old, um, they discovered a tumor in the left side of my brain. Uh, it was perfectly normal. Everything was normal. You know, I was living life, watching all these TV shows, movies, and it was perfectly normal. Then I slept that night right before my enrollment for the second semester of my uh, biology years. In I mean, sorry, I took biology when I was in college. Then I woke up in the hospital. A doctor came out and said, hey, you had a severe seizure. And, and my family thought I was possessed. So I was like, oh. <laughs> and, this, is, this is the Philippines. This yeah, is still a place yeah, where. And, and my grandma, like, um, uh, my grandma actually took my shirt that I used that night. Mm -hmm. and, and she gave it to a necromancer or like a, 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 someone who identifies whatever, you know, spiritual stuff, um, supernatural and stuff. And her idea is like, if I give it to him, maybe he can help. Yeah. And then he like performed some voodoo stuff. Or, some kind of. Yeah, some stuff. And then he found out that she said and, and she said that that someone was in love with me oh and they they, <laughs> they kinda, put a spell yeah they put a spell <laughs> something like that so that's, it a, was weird. that's a twisted kind of love yeah that they the, put a spell on i don't know what happened but anyways um went to the doctor and they had an M i had an mri scan and they found a tumor in the left side of my brain wow how how big was the tumor it was very small but anything alien in your brain is dangerous. Yeah, it's not a, not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. So that's not supposed to be there, right? Well, okay, so they discovered the tumor. What happens next? And what happened next was my father came up and said, "Hey, um, we need you, you. should stop going to school. You know, you should, mm -hmm. you should rest." So I rested for about a year. Then my father came up and he asked me some, like he said, "I think God is calling you to be a pastor." And I was like, "What? What? Like maybe in his mind, you know, this could like, oh, you're maybe dying anyways. You know, you dedicate your life to God. I'm not sure what his motive was." But you know, is the thinking that if you become a pastor, maybe God will have mercy yeah, on yeah, you. Yeah, maybe it, your works will. <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyways, um, either way, he says you're supposed to become a pastor yeah. in an Asian culture. Yeah, you don't have any choice if you have an Asian parent. You know, your, your father probably is a little bit flexible because he's from America. But my parent is you don't have any choice. You know, so they, they say you you're a nurse, you're a nurse. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so no, no, you have no choice. Yeah. So I went to school as a pastor and. And by the grace of God, I found I found my faith there and found God. After after that situation, man, I was just because I was very scared during that time. You know, when you're 17, you have a lot of dreams, you know. And and during that time, I was like, man, I'll, I'll be confined in the hospital because anytime you have a seizure, right? Yeah. And, you can't drive a car. Yeah. Or you can't do anything. Yeah. Sports, maybe. Yeah. And it's all as dangerous. if I drive, but <laughs> just you don't drive right now. <laughs> But but I can't do all these stuff anymore. In, in fact, the doctor said you can't travel outside the island because you know you must be under our jurisdiction. Anything happens, you come to the hospital, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I was very scared, and and that limited almost you know everything that I do. Hmm. But you know I've started to say, hey, I just want to full send, give it all to God, and I started praying. Yeah, and I started praying, and during that time it was a miracle. I've never had any seizures. Hmm. Yeah, I never had any seizures. Studying the Bible, fell in love with studying the Bible. People came to teach me uh, the Bible and and start to see the beauty of it. Yeah, and, and start to find my calling. Uh, preach in the girls' dorm, pr preach in the boys' dorm. Why do you say girls' dorm first? Because <laughs> that was the first place I've ever preached in. Because <laughs> yeah. I know the boys will judge me because <laughs> uh -oh. I've been doing a lot of stupid stuff in school. Uh -oh. uh, so the girls, you know, they kind of don't know me. Uh -huh. But but anyways. And, and I found my calling and every six months we would go to the doctor and the doctor would come up and say the tumor is getting smaller. Hmm. It's kind of weird. The tumor is getting smaller. The tumor is getting smaller. Three times I had my MRI and I think the fourth time the tumor was completely gone. Wow. No medication, no change of diet. I was not a vegetarian. I was not healthy during that time. So I can't say, oh, it's because of my diet. Mm -hmm. Nothing, but it was gone. So it's all miracle. And so if you ask me how this fuels me during the situation, like literally right now, we don't know what we're going to do next week right. or tomorrow. We're literally zero mm -hmm. be because of what's ha what happened. You know, our schedules are all gone. But God's just giving me hope all the time. Just look back at what I've done for you before. Yeah, I, I love that idea. This idea that if you, if you can have... Uh 
a memory of what God has yeah. done in the past, yeah. like that actually strengthens you yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Every time I hear a sermon or every time I read a Bible verse, when the rubber meets the road or when the chips are down, everything sometimes goes into science fiction mode. Hmm. Like really. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> like what if know, this is all made up? Science yeah, fiction? Like, yeah. When, when I had a, that tumor in the left side of my brain, all I did was just read God's promises. Okay. And sometimes when I read it, it becomes just, ah, okay, it will happen in the past, but I'm sure it will not happen to me. So I even even now I struggle with that. Like, mm. oh, is God really going to deliver me? You know? But so there's no amount of pep talk really could like change my mind. You know? Like, so if it's not about pep talk, if it's not about just like encouraging yourself, then what makes the difference? My whole, my whole, the whole time, man, I'm just, I'm just talking to God and just, Lord, help me and help my unbelief. Because I, even though I've been through all this, I still don't trust God. Remember the story in the Bible where they met the demoniac in Mark chapter five? Yeah. And, and, and as soon as they met the demoniac, they run away and they left Jesus, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. Why were they afraid? Like, that well, that there's incident, a demoniac in front yeah, of them. Yeah, right. I mean, technically. But Jesus was with them. Mm. Like the same God who was like an hour ago, calmed the storm. He stood up and said, peace be still. Yeah. But why were they running? Like the same God who fed the 5,000 technically. The mm-hmm. same God who healed the sick. The same Jesus who technically healed the blind man. But why were they running? Mm. Like the same question you're asking me now. Yeah. Like, like, what's wrong with you? You know, so what's, what's I think it's a human tendency when you have fear, an automatic result is to run away. Hmm. Like an automatic result, an automatic impulse of every human when something comes suddenly is to run away. Hmm. And, and, and I think many of us Christians, or as far as I am, because I'm a Christian, as what I have observed, I've seen people, their automatic response to Corona is just to run away. Hmm. Fear. Mm. You know, you, you're forgetting that Jesus promised that he will be with you. Mm. And so during this situation, I'm just asking the Lord, please remind me. Yeah. You know, remind me of the past. Mm. Just remind me of what you have done in the past. As you have delivered me in the past, I'm sure you will deliver me in the future. Mm. And I'm just saying, Lord, please help my unbelief. What would you say to someone who maybe hasn't had that? Like they never had a brain tumor that God miraculously mm-hmm. healed. They mm-hmm. never were in an airplane that was doomed for, you know, a crash, <laughs> but then they were saved. They, like they yeah. never went to North Korea. Mm-hmm. And with like, mm-hmm. what do you say to someone who's never had that testimony? Mm-hmm. They can't think of a moment in the past where God was there. And they might not, aren't even sure that God's there at all right. to begin with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a beautiful question, man. I think, I think that's a question that we need to consider because not, like as what you've said we, when we were talking about this you're like not everyone had the testimony you know and if you want to make it practical that's i guess i guess it's such it's such a it's sobering thought to think about i personally think if if someone hasn't even had any experience of god at all just to try god and say lord i haven't felt and haven't experienced you before well i guess this kind of brings us back to when you had the tumor yeah i've never had that experience you, yeah never had that's a, true never had an experience before yeah. never mm-hmm. like found yeah. god or mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. yeah but but all i prayed during that time is just to lord please help my unbelief i do not believe you mm. just help my unbelief and and the lord delivered man his word and mm-hmm. i realized that god's promises is not dependent on what we feel hmm what do you how? mean? Because sometimes we think that in order for God to fulfill the promise, we need to really believe. No. You know, we need to really, the more we believe, the more God will deliver. Are you saying that, that the more that you believe, the more God will move? Like, are yeah, you saying that that's yeah, not true? Yeah. For me personally, I've realized that even though I don't feel like it, I'll just say, Lord, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. You got to do something about this. Wow. I'm being honest with yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and sometimes we 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 paint a picture of God as someone who's in order for you to be for your prayers to be answered, you need to be in a certain level. Uh-huh. Right? You need to be in a certain fast uh-huh. or you need to be And I believe that there's a blessing of being faithful and sure. to trust in God, yeah. but not everyone has the same level of trust. Now, when I had my tumor in my brain, I never had the level of trust that people require me to have. I cannot fast, I don't know how to pray, and I don't have a genuine relationship with God. But I told God, Lord, I don't know, you heal me or not, but you said here, mm. and I claim you in that promise, I don't believe you, but you said this. Wow. So 
it might it might it, it's a great challenge you know for for especially for me during that time i really had an experience with god no experience with him but i said hey you promised you got to do something about this mm -hmm. To say that we're living in uncertain times would be an understatement. And maybe you're having a hard time figuring out what your relationship with God looks like through all the chaos. But Jasper's experience reminds me of a powerful verse that I think speaks to this. Romans 8, 26 to 28 says, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. So that's where we want to leave you with today. Even if you don't have the words figured out, even if your future is uncertain, or you, like Jasper, have stepped out in faith and suddenly you find yourself facing difficult circumstances, know this that God is acting on our behalf. Our loving Father sees you, He hears you, and He knows the plans that He has for your life. So as we step forward into the days ahead, let's keep that in mind.